All right, so we have talked so much about the exports. It is time we also discuss how we can import Excel into our system using Laravel Excel. I will try to cover everything that will help you understand different things while importing. So it might be a longer than usual video in the series. So for imports, I will be using two Excel files. The first one is a simple Excel file to show you how we can import a simple Excel with just one sheet and it will be containing list of users only. So it will be like first name, email, the phone number and password and the address. The other file is a bit more complex one as it will include multiple sheets where each sheet is going to represent a single user and their orders. And we will see how we can import such file with uh, multiple sheets and header row. So let's get started. Firstly, we are going to create a new import file and for that we need to run the following command. So let's go into our terminal and run the command php artisan make import and the name of our file. So in our case, it is going to be user import. Similar to our export command, we can also specify the model as a tag to this command. But we will do it manually for now. By executing this command, if you go back to our code, you will see there is a new directory inside the app folder. And inside the imports, we have our new import file. By default, it is implementing to collection interface. But if we had specified the model, then it would be implementing the two model interface. So the first way I'm going to show you is by using the two model interface. So I will clear this one up. And instead of the two collection, I'm going to implement the two model interface. If we had provided the tag inside the command, then we would have to do this. But uh, since we haven't provided the model name while creating this import file, so we will have to do it manually. And this interface has one method named model, which we must define. This method takes in a parameter of array and basically this represents a single row of our Excel file which we are trying to import and it will return a new model instance. So here I am defining all the key values and each index that I am using here responds to a single column inside our Excel file. Now in order to import we can either upload an Excel file or we can move our file inside the public folder and use that file to import. I will be moving our Excel file into the public folder and then we will create our route from where we can trigger this import. So let's create a route and update our controller to import this file. Inside the web.php I'm going to create a new route named import. And now let's go to our controller and here I'm just going to create a new method called import. Inside this import method we just need to use the Excel facade and the import method to import our Excel file. One other way would be to create a command and execute that from the terminal. But you can try that on yourself. Anyways, we now we have the route and inside our controller we are using Excel facade to import. This import method takes in multiple parameters. The first one being the export file instance, the second being the name of the file, and the third is an optional one which is for the disk. If we are not specifying the disk, it is going to use the default one which is local. There can be a fourth parameter which is for specifying the reader type in case the reader type is not detectable by the file extension. So we can specify whether it is an Excel file or a CSV file or any other supported uh, extension. Also I have moved my Excel file from the public folder to the storage app folder because the local disk is uh, pointing towards the storage app directory. So let's give it a try now and see if we can get the data in the database. I've also added a return statement here so that in case of success, we will see something in the browser. First, let's also go to the database and see how many records are there inside our database right now. And then we will see how many records are there after the import. So I will open up Workbench and we can run this query and see the last index is ID. Or we can do simply count of all the records. And now we can see that there is only 100 records at the time. Now we will go to our browser and hit the import route. So we can see our return statement and now let's go back to our database and rerun this query. And now we can see that five new users has been added. And if I run this query, we can see that all of our five new users has been added to our database. 
So that is how we can add the data from the Excel file into our database using the two modal interface. And that is simple way of importing an Excel or CSV file. There is one fix that I've made. So what I've changed is I've used hash make. So our password will be encrypted and I have rerun our import inside the browser. Now, if we go to the database, we can now see that our password is encrypted. Now, I will talk about a few different things you can do while imports. The first thing I want to talk about is called absurds. Now, what do you think will happen if I import the same file again? So inside our browser, let's go to import again. And you can see we are running into an SQL error because the email column is a unique one inside our database schema. Now, in case we are importing an Excel file where we could have faced duplication of unique columns, we can use an interface called with observes and define the method unique by to overcome this. So let's go to our code and inside our Excel file, I'm going to implement a new interface called with observe and define the method named unique by. And here I'm just going to define the column name, which is going to be unique or our primary key. And that is the only condition we need to define inside this method that the column name either should be a primary key or a unique column. Now, what is going to happen is instead of adding a new row, if there is an entry of the same email, the entire row will be updated. So let's save and go back to our browser. And I'm going to refresh. And you can see we can see the return response. But there will be no entry, no new entry for the same users. Instead, if you go to the updated at column and you can see that the time will be updated to the current time because this entire row has been updated now. One more thing we can do here is to specify which columns to update in case of duplication of data. For that, we have another interface called with absurd columns and we will have to define a method absurd columns, which will return an array of columns name to be updated in case of duplication. So inside our Excel file, I'm going to implement with absurd columns. And we need to define a method name absurd columns. And I'm only going to update the name of the user. The second thing that I want to talk about is a skipping row with the two model interface implemented. So in case we want to skip a, skip a row for some condition, we can do that. So inside our model method, I can just return null and it will skip the current row. So I won't be doing it for all. Let's say if we don't have a name, so the first column is empty, then I'm going to return null. I'm not going to add a new user. So that is one way to skip our Excel row. The next thing that I want to talk about is called the importable trail. So just like the export files, we had the exportable trait to be used inside our export class, we can also use the importable straight here. So we will simply do use importable. And now instead of using the Excel facade to import the file, we can use a similar syntax to the export and import the file. So now the last thing I want to talk about in this video is called the heading row. So inside the Excel, you might have noticed that we don't have our heading row at the top. And we are just getting the column values via the indexes 0, 1, 2. So what if we had a header or heading row at the top? Now, in case we have an Excel file like this one, uh, we need to specify that our Excel contains the header row. So for that, we need to implement an interface called with heading row. And now for this, let's go to our code. And what we will have to do is inside our Excel file, we just need to implement with heading row. And now instead of 0, 1, 2, the indexes, we can specify the uh, name of the columns. So this is how we can use the heading row in our Excel imports. So there is one more thing that I would like to talk about. So in case our heading row is not at the top, so something like this, and this is just the heading for the whole export or something, or just empty row. And our heading row is not at the first level or the top level. So what we can do is we can specify that uh, at which row our heading row exists. So inside our Excel file, we just need to define a method called heading row. And we can specify the row number in order to let Laravel Excel know that this is where our heading row is. One more thing about the heading row is the formatting. 
So by default, Laravel Excel automatically uh, uses the helper string slug in order to format the heading key. So for example, let's say instead of phone underscore number, the uh, key name is phone and then there is a space after that. So what Laravel Excel will do is automatically converts the key in lowercase and also replace the spaces with the underscore. In case you don't want any formatting uh, by default, then you can just override this and use the none formatter. Now, in case you want to do some custom formatting, prepending or appending something to the key, you can do that as well inside the service provider using the extend method provided by Laravel Excel. The last thing to talk about the uh, heading row is the grouping of the values. So let's say inside our Excel file, each user could have multiple addresses. And we have something like this. So for this data to be imported, we can use another concern called with grouped heading row. And what it's going to do is it's going to return us the values of the same key as an array. So that is a little bit about the importing of the Excel files. And there will be one more video after this where I will talk about how we can import multiple sheets, batch inserts, chunks, and we will see a little bit more. So that's it for the video and I will see you in the next one.